After the Hollywood strikes that affected many projects throughout 2023, as well as studio layoffs, many of the promised releases this year have been pushed back or canceled outright. However, there's still plenty to look forward to across all genres. So we've decided to compile a list of all the series we are looking forward to the most. Before we begin, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And no cost to you, every new sub helps us achieve our goal and keeps us motivated to create new content. We've also officially launched our merch store, linked in the description, so be sure to check that out. We thank you for your support. With that being said, I'm your host, Jamie, and here are 10 most anticipated series of 2024. Number 1, Cobra Kai Season 6 The final season in the epic continuation of the Karate Kid franchise is coming to a close, and funny enough, kicking off a new series of Karate Kid films, which is said to also being released sometime this year. The last we saw on the show was Johnny and Daniel merging their students to create a new school, Miyagi Fang, and take on the Cobra Kai for a final time in a massive tournament. Whoever comes out on top, the other school must close. And I'm just spitballing here, but I'm going to assume that since it's the final season of the series, it will be Cobra Kai that closes its doors. Then, I assume, the kids will go on to possibly participate in an international tourney, or maybe even as the American team for Olympic martial arts competition. I'm also hoping to get a cameo from Hilary Swank as she is the only mainline character who has not made an appearance, and it would be kind of cool if she saw the name Miyagi and the style Miyagi-Do on TV and came to see it in person to honor her former master. The show is confirmed to be 10 episodes in length and released sometime in 2024, so here's hoping we get a definitive date soon. Number 2, Stranger Things Season 5 after an epic, record-breaking season four that introduced us finally to the overarching series villain, Venka, and even saw a few deaths along the way, the core group feels both closer and more broken than ever as they enter early adulthood and get ready to face the biggest threat ever. It also has a bittersweet overtone as this will be the final season, so we will be saying goodbye to all these characters. Whether they survive the events of the show or not. We are also getting a new addition to the cast in the form of Linda Hamilton of Terminator fame, playing an undisclosed role. I'm curious if, since the ending of season 4 saw a giant rift opening up over Hawkins and basically swallowing up the town, if the show will expand its locations and become more like a statewide catastrophe then I could possibly see Linda Hamilton playing some kind of senator or government official who intercedes to put a stop to this disaster. Now unfortunately, due to the strikes, filming was put on hold so their targeted date of late 2024 might not stay. But if they say, split the season into two parts like they did with season 4, then we could possibly get at least 5 episodes around late fall, early winter. Number 3, Avatar, The Last Airbender. Based on the amazing cartoon show from Nickelodeon, there have been a few attempts to bring this to the realm of live action, including a dismal offering by M. Night Shyamalan, despised by both fans and critics alike. However, this one has, or at least had, promise, as the original creators were on board working with the scriptwriters and directors to craft a fateful adaptation. Then they departed the series, citing creative differences, and that has me a little worried. After the trailer dropped, I wasn't too impressed either. They went from whitewashing the entire cast to now replacing them with all Asian actors. Even though in the series itself, the different nations are supposed to represent different cultures from all over the world including the Inuit people as the Water Tribes and the Americas as the Earth Kingdom, but I digress. It's about the story and the acting. That's what's truly important. Which brings me to my next point. The fighting looks absolutely amazing. The people perform the various martial arts styles fluidly, 
using their elemental abilities in ways that look realistic and not awkward like they did in M. Night's film. But the dialogue leaves something to be desired. It's very flat and almost kind of cheesy. None of the charm that the original series had, or the humor. Either way, it definitely has my curiosity, and I can't wait till February 22nd when it releases on Netflix. Number 4, Fallout. Now, I've been a fan of Fallout since I first wandered into the Capital Wasteland all the way back in 2008. And ever since then, I have gone back to play the originals, and even the spin-offs. In roughly around 2014, I found myself penning a script idea for a possible TV series set in this glorious universe. Never did I imagine that one day, someone who had the same idea would have the ability to make this a reality. When I first saw the set photos, I was a bit alarmed. It didn't look great, and there was absolutely no plot details. So I thought, well, this could end up just being another generic show with a dumbed-down plot that just happens to use the franchise's name for clout. Kinda like Halo did. But then, the trailer dropped. And they nailed the mood, the music, and even the quirkiness of the characters. And I'll admit, I'm hooked. I can't wait. Sure, this could end up being exactly the kind of cluster muck that plagues many of Prime shows. Eight episodes of nothing, and then the entire plot in the last two episodes stuffed with all the action scenes. But I'm hoping there's more to it than that. Guess we'll find out on April 12th when it begins airing on Amazon Prime. Number 5. True Detective Night Country True Detective has been one of those series which has had a rocky relationship with its fan base. The first season came out perfect. I mean, it nailed everything it came to do and more. The second season, however, was rushed into production and failed on almost every level. Then there was a huge gap, and suddenly we got season three, which was good, but not great. But at least a sign they were returning to form. So now, the first teasers for season four have dropped. And honestly, my first thought was, is this the new season for Fargo? I mean, for anyone who has seen the first season of Fargo, or the film, you can't deny it has those vibes all over it. But before you come at me, that's not a bad thing at all. I love Fargo. And I'm currently deep into season 5 and loving every minute of it. Anyway, this season stars Jodie Foster as Liz Danvers, a sheriff of a small town in the northern winterlands. It was filmed in Iceland but I don't think it actually takes place there, most likely in Canada or Alaska or something. It also has Wind River vibes, as the story seems to center around the murders of indigenous native people. So I'm curious to see how the mystery unravels. Be sure to check it out January 14th when it begins streaming on Max. Number six, House of the Dragon season two. Taking place literal moments after season one ended, Rhaenyra has just learned of her son's death at the hands of Queen Alsen's son, Aemond. Those of you who watched the show or even read the books, I gotta say, the naming scheme absolutely bothers me, as half the time I have to connect the dots in my head for certain characters, because there's multiple Aegons and then Rhaena and Rhaenyra and, well, you get the picture. In the books, it's a bit easier, but in the show, because many of the actors change as the showtime jumps, so I'm often having to do a double take to realize who is who. Hopefully in season two, it's a bit more straightforward and evenly paced. I like the more slow burn nature of the final five episodes of season one against the erratic pace of the first five. I get why they did it, but yeah. Anyway, I'm excited to see this story unfold as it doesn't exactly follow the book. They put their own twist on a few things here and there. And also looking forward to the upcoming spin-offs, Snow, A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms, and 10,000 Ships. Sadly, 
Blood Moon was canceled before it could take off. A series set 10,000 years before the events of Game of Thrones, showing us the first men and their adventures establishing the realm. Either way, Season 2 is scheduled to be released sometime in June, so be sure to keep an eye out for that. Number 7, The Boys, Season 4. Let me just say, there was promise that there would be episodes in Season 3 that would push the boundaries of what's acceptable. And while I loved every minute of the series so far, it did not deliver on that promise. And then Gen V released. And quite frankly, that series delivered on its hype. So maybe now that they've seen they can do some truly debaucherous and heinous things in their show, they'll go all out in season four. Because everything points to Homelander truly losing his shit, like the January 6th insurrection, but times a million. I cannot wait to see what kind of mayhem erupts as things heat up both politically and socially in this universe. Now that Compound B is out in the open, Homelander no longer bows down to satisfy the company's carefully constructed image of what a superhero should be. The whole incident at the school and of course Butcher going all out in his revenge plot because he's dying anyway. Can't wait to meet the new characters either as they seem interesting just as mysteriously evil and corrupt. I also wonder if Sam is possibly the new Black Noir, or if they just cloned him or something, or maybe after they iced and mind-manipulated Soldier Boy, he's become a docile tool for them to use. We'll get our answers on June 13th when it begins airing on Amazon Prime. Number 8, Star Wars The Acolyte. I'm going to be upfront with you guys and say I do like Star Wars. Love the films growing up, even the bad ones. But now, I'm kind of sick of the whole Skywalker saga and how this great big universe feels so small. Especially since all the main characters keep somehow bumping into one another. So, when I heard about this series, set thousands of years before there was even a Jedi Council, I was immediately intrigued. I kept my hype in check though as often a bunch of these kinds of shows get announced and then quietly get canceled so they can focus on carefully audience testing works and whatnot. Now, as of current information, the plot has changed to being set around the time of the collapse of the High Republic, approximately a hundred years before the events of The Phantom Menace. So it's still pre-Skywalker days, but not as ancient as was initially pitched. It follows a former Padawan who joins her master to investigate a series of crimes, which eventually lead to some sinister discoveries. Obviously, those discoveries will most likely be the Sith, possibly involving Palatine's master, Darth Plagueis, or someone before him. Most of the information is being kept hush-hush, of course. Unfortunately, there's no official release date outside of mid-2024, but a trailer is said to drop on Star Wars Day, so be sure to look out for that. Number 9, The Penguin. Those of you who enjoyed Matt Reeves, The Batman, can rejoice, as a spin-off series set in that universe is heading to Max pretty soon. It follows Colin Farrell's portrayal of Oswald Cobblepot, aka The Penguin, and takes place roughly one week after the flooding of Gotham City at the end of the film. This series will consist of eight episodes, and from what I've read, I'm assuming it's going to depict his rise as one of the central crime lord figures in Gotham City, since Moroni and Falcon crime families are basically things of the past now. There's rumors we will see introduction to other minor crime bosses, such as Raymond Sionis, aka Black Mask, and even Bane and Hush. So I'm curious to see how this all unfolds. The events of the show are said to set up the plot for Batman 2, which I think is scheduled to come out sometime in 2025. No official release date has been given outside of late 2024, so expect a trailer sometime in spring at the earliest. Number 10, Shogun. Based on the best-selling, award-winning book series Shogun, this show looks absolutely amazing. 
It has an incredible cast, downright mind-blowing locations and set designs, and some of the most epic looking fight scenes for fans of samurai stories and other tales from Japanese history. They originally adapted the novel back in 1980, starring Richard Chamberlain and Toshiro Mifune, as it was pretty glorious then. But it also had to leave out a lot of what made the source material so great, which is why I think this new FX series will certainly blow me away. Consisting of 10 episodes, each one a little over an hour in length, it is definitely going to be a long and detailed exploration of the characters, and I can't wait for February 27th when the show officially begins airing on Hulu. Thanks for checking out the video. What series are you looking forward to the most? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay up to date with our latest releases. You can reach out to us on Twitter or X at Studios Back, or chat with us on Discord, linked in the description. We've also recently launched our very own merch store, so be sure to check that out, also linked below. I've been your host, Jamie. Nothing like the winter season to binge some good shows and have fun.